now that I am on stir, right, the stir is open. I can see that what I have here is different type of the stir. So number one is straight stirs. Number two is spiral stirs. And then like semi or like pool. And then the rest of the components that I have. But I would say the mostly use of the stirs would be on the straight one. So if I know how to handle the straight one, then I would be pretty much good. And the most trickiest one would be with the straight. And most likely with the stairs, which is having like double run or like double arms, right? So if you know how to do a double arm or like double running stairs, then you're pretty much too good to do any sort of other type of these stairs, meaning that three running parts, three um, arms, you know, or any other types that you might um, wish to model. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a double running stairs, right? So I know this fact that, okay, the level itself is around 3.20 meters, right? So what I'm supposed to climb is 3.20. So to start doing my stairs, I need to have my eye under two different settings. If those settings are perfectly matched together, then I'm all set to go. What are those settings? I would say one is on the edit type, the other one here is on property. So first, I'm gonna go to the edit type. Here, I know that since this stair is supposed to climb up 3.20 meters, then the maximum riser height on 0.20 would be something that makes sense. So I'm just gonna get stick with that, right? Also, the minimum treat depth is like 0.30. That's what I put here. So originally, if you guys like take a look on it, would be like 0.25. However, I decided myself to put that value as 0.30, right? The rest of the settings is actually like being able to set up once the stairs is already placed. So I'm not gonna rush into those settings. However, this part is the essential part, is the mandatory part which will affect these stairs. So you have to make sure that these values are making sense. So once these values are set, then I have to go to the property tab. Here, you need to make sure what you have under the actual thread depth and actual riser height is exactly the same values that matches what you have on the edit file. So that is really important. That's like, but you guys have to have an eye on it. Once that is set up, then you come here, you figure out, let's say, the place that you're about to place that stairs. For example, I'm about to put on these stairs here. So with the first click, these stairs will be starting up. Also, if I zoom more in, you can see the comment on my left down, right? You can see the number of the risers that are created and also the remaining stairs over to the next level. So since I'm on level one, these values are all counted to level two. So if I just fill up all the part, right, all the gap, then I would be reaching to level two. However, that stair would be like a one running pipe or one arm stair, which is not the case because I wish to have double running or double arm stir. So instead of doing the 16 riser created and none remaining, what I have to do is to create only eight because I wish to have like a same size of the arm, same size of the running, right? So here I would just make sure to have eight stirs. As you can see here, eight riser created, eight remaining, and 2.10 on the thread depth. So that being said, if like I climb eight steps, then times 30 would be 2.40, right? But the first step, the first step wouldn't be counted. For that reason, once you see 2.10, according to this calculation, you're fine. So I'm gonna click there, right? So the first arm is just created. 
then in order to do the second arm or the second running, what I'm supposed to do is that without clicking on anything or without dragging anything, I would just bring the point viewer here on the last line or on the last step of the first running part. I will just follow that up, right? Till I sort of like make sure that I do have the proper space to place the second running part, right? So this seems to have like an enough gap or enough distance to place on the second um, running, right? So here, once I can see the blue cut lines getting appeared there, I'm going to click, right? And then turn my point viewer to the right. As you can see, those stairs are not connected. You can see the corridor between. You can see the connection between, right? So I'll just make sure to be that straight. However, you can do some sort of like angle if you wish, but I'm like pretty uh, clear with that. And then I would just need to fill up the gap part so then I can reach the next level. And as you can see, if I simply press right now and place that stairs, I will be having two equal running type stairs. So I'm going to do that. And as you can see, I can have like a perfectly working double um, equal size arm one, right? As what you can see. Now, once you place the stair, in order to finish the stairs and get out of the order, you need to check you need to like place the check mark, right? Also, once you did, once you do press the check uh, mark, you will also like have the railing getting automatically done too. So to do that, I'm gonna do the check mark here, finish that. And as you can see here, the stair is also created, which so start with that part, right? Because we did start from this part which is also changeable through that flip thing. Here you can see the flip option, which lets you to flip the, um, I would say the climbing part. So if you wish to climb these stairs in that direction, then you would do that, right? However, if you wish to have it back as what it used to be, right? Starting from here, going all the way off, then that's the way how it is. Now to see these stairs in 3D, I'm gonna select that stairs and do that selection box. So click there. And as you can see, I can see the full stair getting placed here. Right? That is my stair. However, it's, uh, the stair is getting conflicted with the floor and with the ceiling because of having no shaft getting happen there. Once I do the shafting part, then I can make an opening and make sure that the, um, the function of these stairs is perfectly working. But the logic, the way how we do uh, model these stairs will remain the same. So it's always the same, uh, just like depends on how many arms or like how many running you wish to have, how many landings you wish to have. And um, just like the width, the height, right? These sort of stuff. But the logic is always the same. So as long as you're having the same logic, you will be having to have the perfectly result getting out of these stairs. Now, in order to see the settings that I have for this stair, I would just click on that stair and then go on the edit time, right? Once you click on the edit type, you will be able to see the settings and properties specifically for that stair. Also, if you're having multiple stairs in the project, make sure to duplicate your file. So that is really important. However, duplication is not right now available because you're supposed to do the duplication right before placing the stairs. So that is like one thing that is important. Again, I try to select the whole stair going to the edit type. Once you select here the whole stair, right, you will be able to even do the duplication here as well. But like if you only select one arm or like one running type, one running that you have in here, then you wouldn't be able to do the duplication. So that is the way how it, it is. So make sure to select the whole stairs 
And then those settings are already done. So we, we are not going to touch that one. We have run type, we have landing type, and like function. Um, also, on top of that, we are having support. Support is actually like those sort of like profiles that we are sort of like having them by the side of these thirds. So you will be able to even manipulate those stuff. So if, for example, I want to change anything regarding those supports, that is the way where I'm supposed to go, right? So you can click there, starts to add, like start to put on as an open, meaning like no support or like having that one. Also, that is the stringer, the run support type. If I click there, then I will reach out to the material, to the material uh, properties tabs. With also all other settings that you can um, touch them, right? So for example, I would be able to give it like another material. If you want to like do any sort of like changes regarding the profile of the support, right? You would be able to do that. So those are regarding the support. Also, we have all the access to the run part. For example, if I click there, another will, will window will show up, right? that what I can do, I can uh, do like the settings here. For example, I can change the material, right? I can um, add or like remove the threads. So then I can have like another style of like the stairs. I can do the same with the riser, right? Or like do the, um, I would say riser profile, riser thickness. So if like you wish to have like a customized sort of stair or like um, adding nosing, right, for the corner or for the, the forehead of, uh, of these stairs. That is like uh, where you're supposed to change stuff. So those are, I would say, some sort of like additional settings that if you wish to customize your stairs more in details, and like more in regards with the, um, I would say, um, material purposes or... Um, appearances, that is like very useful. However, the structure of the stairs is all manipulated with those parameters that we want. So we're which we're pretty cool. So that's only just like an additional, um, I would say information that you guys had to know. And then what I want to do is to go on the architecture tab and select shaft option. So going to select shaft option. Once you select on shaft option, then you have to do, again, a closed loop. So I'm going to click there and simply place that sort of rectangle, right? So again, what I've done was pretty much the same as what we used to do on the flooring, on the ceiling, or on the roof. And you just like put on a closed boundary. Once that is done, then I have to manipulate the base offset and the top offset. For sure, I'm not going to leave that on point 30 because I don't want that shaft to be cutting off the first floor because there is no point for cutting off the first floor. So you have to make sure that this is above the level one. So I'm just going to leave it on point 30. And then the top offset should be higher than the level two, right? So I'll put it on point five. I only want to do one level for that purpose. Uh, I'm just like working with the level one to level two. Now I'm gonna um, click on the check mark, and if you, if I go on the um, if I again select the stair and uh, select the selection box, now this time, as you can see, the shaft is getting higher, right? So no longer the stairs are con conflicting with the ceiling or floor. Then let's do the uh, ex, uh, additional railings here. That would be much more useful. So I'm just going to extend my view of it, right, with those sort of arrows that I have. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to the architecture tab again, click on railing. I have my own railing. I'm going to put it on level two. Gonna select the peak line and select the opening part. 
as well. Okay. Just like the important point is that unlike the um, shaft or like floor or like other stuff, this should not be a closed door. So just make sure that what you're having is not a closed door. Then what else like should be added? Another one should be added here. However, as well we said, shouldn't be a closed door. For example, should be reaching there. Again, make sure it is on level two and then do the check mark. So I hope you guys find this video useful and uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet as I'm always constantly updating the contents to make sure that you guys are getting to learn new stuff and tricks. Thank you.